I was going to do something tonight, and it's a little bit happened already. We've got a nice, dense area in the front two rows. But for this message to work tonight, I actually need you all in. Can I ask you, I know seats are so sacred, and you might hate me right now. But please, can I ask you to come in further down and further in, please? We need the gathering. The church is the gathered. The gathering, not the far aparting as far as possible. Ing, come on, fellas, it ain't gonna work otherwise. All right, well done, well done. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Doesn't it feel good having some neighbours nearby? All right, this is why we come on time as well. Otherwise, we're gonna miss our message. Woo-hoo. All right, so. What we're going to do tonight, first up, yeah, my message is called Tell Your Stories. And see, got a verse here from Psalm 66, and it says this, Shout for joy to God, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious, say to God how awesome are your deeds. You know what that is? That is remembering what he has done. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. My God is so great. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. Come and see. Come and see. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. You know what that is? That is remembering. Do you know what it is remembering? The parting of the Red Sea when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they had no way and God made a way. And here in this psalm, like a few hundred years later when David or whoever wrote this particular song, they are, he's remembering, and he's not the only one because it got recorded in the psalm, so everybody got to sing this song remembering what God had done. And then verse 6, Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. That's telling the story. Is that telling the story? That is telling the story, that is remembering what he has done, and that is saying, come and see everybody, and come and hear, because I'm going to tell you about what my God has done. And then I've got one more Bible verse. This is, actually, this is Jesus speaking, so this is, I couldn't find a good picture, actually, of all the pictures were... Well, there was one, but it was very dodgy, but it was because the the dude was demon-possessed, so he was naked. (laughs) And the dude that Jesus was talking to, and this was the one where they had, Jesus had um, cast out the demons, and the demons, the legion, had said, let us go into the pigs, there's pigs nearby. So the demons went into the pigs, and they all trotted off the cliff. So it would have been a cool picture, um, but you just have to imagine. Uh, But... The guy who just had this whole legion of demons kicked out of him was begging Jesus, can I come with you? Like, you're cool to hang around. Uh, But Jesus said no, and this is what Jesus told him. Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So, come and see, come and hear, go and tell, right? All right, so what we're going to do tonight, Jackie was a little bit incorrect that I'm going to tell your stories. Actually, you're going to tell your own stories. Um, So we're going to do something a bit different. And you're just going to, in little gatherings where you are, this is what we're going to do. Listen carefully. Okay, you're just going to, I'm going to give you something. So the first one, for example, is healings. Think of the coolest healing story that you know, one where you've seen, or like it was actually, where you've got a direct connection, not I Googled it and it was on YouTube. Um, Where you've got a direct connection. Think of your coolest healing story. Tell it in your group, okay? If you've got none, 
that's cool. That's okay. Like, if you're new and you're like, oh my gosh, that's fine. You're going to get to hear some cool stories. If you don't have a story, no problem. I'd listen to other people's stories, okay? So, in little groups, and you have to tell the one minute version of the story, okay? The one minute version, which is not about my glory, but is about God's glory. So in your group, share a few stories, and then when I decide you've had enough time, you'll just go one, two, three, you're going to point at the person in your group who you think would be best to tell their story, and then if you, th- if you think, we can't have all the groups tell their story, so then you get to put up your hand and go, we've got a cool story, and if I pick your group, that person gets to come and tell the story, okay? Okay, so we've got a few different topics, but we're starting with... Healings, because I mean, I could have just bored you with my own. You're only, you've got to only pick one healing story. Your best. Tell it to your group, and your group can pick the one that gets to come. Okay, go, 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 Gadget. Well, four, four or five in a group, otherwise it'll take all night. Three or four or five in a group. Okay, we're talking about healings. We're talking about healings. So, if you didn't get around everybody in your group, it might be a sign that you need to um, multiply your group next time around. All right, so who thinks that group's got a cool story of, what were we doing? Healings. Only one group. Come on. Okay, we've got one here, we've got one here. Okay, yep. Point at the person in your group. Denise, oh yeah, Concy. Come on, Concy. Denise and Robin. All three of you. And, come on, come on. Is it on? Yep, you're on. Okay, so um, healing. So before I came in to Hosanna Church, um, I felt a little hurt, Um, all of this burden and everything, and when I attended my first Sunday Mass, I just felt God's love with healing. Um, I didn't know much people, but through prayer and worship and everyone just acknowledging that I'm a new person, (laughs) overwhelmed with love, yeah, I just felt healed and restored inside. So. Woo-hoo! Go on, Denise. So my story was um, when Madeline was about three, so she's 20 now, so this is a bit of an old story, but um, we were away in Napier, and um, I had... So Olivia was a tiny little dot and the car was parked quite a long way away. And I stepped out on the road and I rolled my ankle and I knew it was really uh, serious because it was on on an old injury and I was in agony and I was in so much pain. I just sat down on the curb and I cried. And (laughs) Maddie came up to me and she just patted my head, (laughs) this little three-year-old, and said, it's all right, mummy. And then she said, Jesus, just take the pain away. And I literally immediately felt this heat just come on my head, it went right through my body to my ankle and the pain just went like that. And I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, and I just, I carried um, Olivia, so the weight of her and I had no pain, no pain, caught sight of the car and I just had this little twinge in my ankle and it was like God said to me, just remember what I just did and uh, no pain after that. Amen. Um, I, don't, I don't know how to cut this down to one minute. Okay, so... Cause You're going to get dinged, Robin. Well, well, this is a very, very, very short version. I was dead, and God revived me. <laughs> the 10-second version. <laughs> um, the, the healing that um, I want to talk about it happened right here. Um, and it was a few years ago when we had a visiting, visiting team from, from Auckland, and it, uh, they were praying for healing all over the place. And um, Fale and her son were here, and his son was, her son was uh, dead. And um, so I saw her standing there, and I said, said to her, would you like one of the team to pray for, for your son? And, and she said, no, God said it has to be somebody from our church. And so I said, oh, okay, I'll pray for him. And um, prayed for him, and um, there was sort of no reaction. Um, and uh, it wasn't until uh, later that uh, when he was asked, you know, when did it, when did, so we carried on praying for him, you know, and it wasn't until later that he said, when, when were you healed? He said, the first time you prayed. <laughs> <laughs> Full healing. So that was who was hearing, eh? That was his hearing, yeah. Sorry, there's a speaker buzzing in my <laughs> ear, so I can't hear. 
They had yeah, a speaker can you, you can hear me. Are you laughing at me or here? Look, hang on. Oh, there's goes. At work with New World, I, um, there was somebody working in the office of me and they came in with a really sore arm and I said, oh, would you like me to pray with you? Because she was, it was really painful and um, she said, oh yes please. So I prayed and in the morning tea time she says, how did you do that? It's, and I said, well, they've got no pain now. And she said, no, there's no pain. It's all gone. It's all better. And um, I said, well, that was God. It's not me. I said, it's God that does it. Amen. Amen. All right, so this is your next one, okay? There's two. You can pick from one or the other, okay? So pick your best story, either encountering God's presence. Now, I know many of you have encountered God's presence, and it might not be dramatic, but tell your story, okay? So that's one option, encountering God's presence, a story of you encountering God's presence or an angelic encounter. Pick one, choose your most exciting, <laughs> choose a cool one, go. All right, time is up. Who's got a story? Who's got a story about an angelic encounter or about encountering God's presence? All right, so there's Yoni over here. There's Catherine over here. There's Yoni and Noah. Come on, Noah. <laughs> Were you pranking him yet? Yeah, better not have been pranking the poor guy. Come on. I suppose I better adjust this mic, eh? Let's bring it back up. I was a little bit reluctant to share this, but I really felt that God was placing it on my heart to share. So I'm not sure if it's going to take one minute or maybe even a little bit longer. <laughs> but back in the 80s, when I was very young, um, so I got mixed up in the wrong crowd. I was in a place where I shouldn't have been, and uh, it was um, up in Upper Cuba Street where the old black power pad used to be, and um, came close to losing my life. I had been slashed and had been beaten really badly. I was lying in the gutter, and um, there was a whole pile of people on the top of me, and the reason why I felt to share it, because I really felt that God was stirring in my heart to share it and um, and I felt my life slipping away as I lay in the gutter and um, could feel people kicking me as I lay in the gutter um, I could feel the blood from my um, from my neck here from my scar years later I found out that that was um, they had just missed my uh, carotid artery um, so all I remember was a huge bunch of uh, huge, huge hands, pair of hands come down and um, grabbed, grabbed me, um, literally grabbed me and, and all these people that were on the top of me went flying um, and I came to, but as I came to, I... Um, I bolted, so I ran, I ran, I literally ran for my life. Um, and I, I just remember, because um, I was with uh, a very close cousin of mine who's still around to this day, and uh, who used to come to this church as well, she did. Um, but my, my, I was just covered in blood. But um, that was God, yeah? That was God. Amen. Um, so I often feel the presence of God and at a time in my life when I felt like I was in the pit of despair and um, really low and I came up here for prayer and nobody prayed for me at that point um, and I was alone up here but I felt the presence of God on me. I felt um, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being the comforter I felt God's arms around me. I felt the warmth of the Spirit in a way that I'd never had before and I never have since. But he brought me out of that despair. Um, two, because they're real quick. So the first one was that 
um, which I didn't hear with the group, but when I was little and I used to really be scared of going to sleep, had you know, always terrible nightmares, this kind of thing. And I remember one night in my dream, an angel coming to me and taking me up and I could see my, and I was sitting in the corner of my room above my bed and I could see myself lying in the top bunk and just felt this real sense of peace, knowing that God was watching over me. Um, and then the second thing was that um, I remember being in an art exhibition or walking in an art gallery and I went, wa- went to go walk into this exhibition and as soon as I stepped over the like entrance into the exhibition, I almost vomited on the spot and I was like, whoa, God, what is going on here? Do you want me to go into this exhibition or don't you? And I really clearly felt like God was saying, yes, go, walk through this exhibition. And as I walked through the exhibition, I could really clearly, he was pointing things out to me and this the sort of the themes in the in the exhibition were uh, to do with political oppression and um, and uh, spiritual oppression and God was really clearly as I was going through the exhibition going look at this situation this is what my heart feels for these people this is what my heart feels about this situation and this is what I think about this and he was really clearly pointing things out to me throughout the whole exhibition and also um, pointing out clearly things for me in terms of his plans for my future. And so I left the exhibition being like, oh my gosh, God, if you can do that for me in an art gallery, you can be like present with me anywhere, anytime. And it was really cool. Man. So I was trying to figure out which encounter, because I've had quite a few encounters, but it was about my second encounter. It was many years ago, actually. And um, it was an encounter with an archangel. So what happened was I was went to plug in my vacuum cleaner and it turned out to be faulty and it actually blew. But as it was starting to blow, the archangel came down and just covered me. Meanwhile, the rest of my family are like on the floor over there, but I was completely protected um, by this big archangel and he was that big, like I felt so little because he was so, so big. So that was my encounter with an angel. <laughs> Olivia and Ruby, seeing as you're pointing at each other, come on. Ironic of me to laugh at Pauline. <laughs> 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 no jokes. Um, <laughs> I remember like growing up in the church and just staring at everyone, like getting ministry and being like, "Wow, that's so cool! I really want that!" Like you know, the shakes and everything. And uh, um, there was an ascend camp. <laughs> Stop laughing. There was an ascend camp that was on, and I wasn't gonna go. But then like I went real last minute, and then Torna prayed for me, and then like I was like getting all the shakes and stuff. <laughs> and then I remember like she just like prayed over my body I think and then I felt this like oh I felt this like presence just like travel through like up my body and out my arms it was really cool and like we were there for like half an hour like doing in sync movements (laughs) (laughs) um for me um this would have been when I was like 16 so I was going through the age of like not real, like coming to church, but not really having my own relationship. And I went out to town with two of my youth leaders. They took me out to go get pizza and hot chocolate. And we were in the car and we were all talking. Um, and then once we'd finished talking, we were like packing up, getting ready to go. And we tried to turn the car on and it didn't work. And we were like, oh no, like what are we going to do? We don't really know anyone out here. And then one of the leaders said, oh, how about we pray? And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, we'll see. And then, um, so we were all sitting there, um, and the two youth leaders prayed, and I didn't say anything because I didn't want to. And then they tried to turn the car on, and then it didn't work. And then one of them said to me, I think you need to pray. Like, I think if you pray, it will work. And I was like, no. Like, I just didn't want to do it. But then they, like, guided me and helped me, and it gave me, like, a way to be able to pray where I felt comfortable. And then I prayed, and then the car turned on. Like, we tried it, and it turned on. And then I was like, nah, you didn't do the car properly before. Like, I was like, (laughs) making excuses. But then he was like, no, that was God. And then I, like, on the way home, like, they didn't know, but I was like, wow, that was so cool. Like, it was actually (laughs) (laughs) So cool. Okay, I've got another one for you. Are you ready? Okay. It's another pick one. Pick your best. Demons cast out or the miraculous? Miracle, Ruby just gave us an awesome miracle anyway. Miraculous or a demon being cast out? Power in the name of Jesus. Share your story. Whoa. Whoa. All right, ding, ding, ding. Time is up. All right, so who's got a good story? Come on, any of you groups at the back? 
Okay. Oh, there's two from that group at the back. Come on, they haven't had anybody come yet. Hands up, who else? Who else has got a good story? My mum's going to take the mic whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, so when we were at college me. in Tasmania, um, I remember getting up and my, having a quiet time with the Lord and saying, Lord, I don't mind going without because we had it just about run out of money by that time. I said, but I'd really like to be able to buy my parents Christmas present. And I thought it was, it's actually, in fact, it wasn't a prayer, it was a thought. Okay, just in, in my head, out of my head, thought nothing more about it. And um, I got down, we had our first um, session at, um, in the morning, and then we broke for morning tea. And when I came back from morning tea, on my desk, Gary and I shared desks, like desk each next to each other. And on my desk, in an envelope, with Pauline on it was a gift of $25. So that was not for Gary and Pauline, it said Pauline. And I just knew that God was care. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was about five when I first encountered with a high up demon. Um, but also a place I used to go to, a church that used to summon demons as well. Um, and but I always fell asleep during during everything. But God, um, but I always felt safe when I went to sleep. And God showed showed me um, basically He pretty much took me out of my own body and showed me what what the true po power of an archangel does. He, um, and God showed me the whole thing of an archangel slaying the demons. And that that's my first encounter of. Of, of the like, demons being cast out, pretty much. Um, I was um, sleeping, and um, during the night I saw this big black claw sort of come over my head, and it was freaking me out. And then I started getting a sore back. So um, I remember, you know, being sick to say, in Jesus' name, to go. And so I did it, and then I felt my whole body jerk, like this whole thing just came out of my body. And then a few years later, Rosella was praying for me, and she saw all these um, claw marks down my back. So it was like a real spiritual um, demon that was um, on me, but in God's name, he, uh, he, he got he left. <laughs> okay, mine's on behalf of Sean, because <laughs> he's not here to tell it. Um, Come closer, Denise. We won't hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay, mine's on behalf of Sean. Um, when he went to the Philippines, he had told God, you know, I'm just going to do the sound and do the lighting. You know, I don't want to have to do anything, you know, anything other than that. And when they were at one of the meetings and they said, you know, anyone who wants prayer, come forward. And in the Philippines, everybody came. The place was packed. And God prompted Sean to go and pray for him. And he's like, come on, Lord. You know, I'm only here to do the, 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 you know, the sound and stuff. And he said, no. I think Gary prompted him and said, no, you need to go down and help. And so he finally gave in and he said, but he had said, no, I just, just give me something simple, Lord, and I'll go do it. So he came to this person and he, he looked at them. They looked perfectly fine. So he's like, okay, I'll go pray for them. And... <laughs> Then they pulled their hand out, <laughs> and it was literally a tiny hand. And he's like, "Come on, Lord, how can you do this to me?" But he's like, "Okay, I'll pray." And so he prayed. I thought, I don't know if other people were around him as well, but he started praying, and he said he literally saw this hand unfold and grow. And he was like, okay. Amen. So God can use Sean, who's only doing it for the sound and the light. <laughs> Who else can he use? Hi. So my one was when we first started coming to church, and we had a group of people come and pray through our house. And I remember we're all sitting around the lounge and they were praying and I remember hearing claw marks coming down the hall and <laughs> so it was quite funny and only because Dave was like, so, sorry, backtrack. I <laughs> um, my family come from a long line of witchcrafts and so our house was quite riddled 
and we're talking, and Dave's like, what craft? And somebody's like, witchcraft? And he's like, sorry, i got to go. He picked up his Bible and ran down the street. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, like oh. and lady was like, I'm so sorry for running out like that. But, you know, just, it was cool hearing, like, demons being casted out and God, like, claiming our house for him. And, yeah, so that's my story. <laughs> Um, when I was pregnant with Isabel, um, yeah, so basically this happened at night and I remember when I, uh, before I went to bed, I left the hallway light on because in case we have to get up in the uh, night to go to the loo. So the hallway light was on, but in this night, I woke up and everything was pitch black. And I don't know if, you, if you've had the experience where you're in the physical world and also the spiritual world and everything was pitch black in the house. I'm like, there's something wrong. I left the hallway light on, and, um, and I could see in the corner that there was this demon that was masquerading as a um, midwife. I just instinctively knew that. And then the demon came lunging at my tummy and just wanted to, the aim was to grab Isabel. And I was like, Jesus, help! And immediately, the demon disappeared. Well, there we go. See, I don't need to tell my stories because there's so many stories out there. I'm going to invite musos if you want to start moving. But you know what? When you tell your stories, faith rises. And it reminds you of God's goodness and it reminds you of God's faithfulness. And if people are listening and they already know the story, then it reminds them. And if they don't know the story, then that's what's called a testimony talking about what God is doing in your life, telling the stories of God at work. And you know what? It raises the expectation. It raises the expectation in those listening. And they think, well, if he's done it before, he can do it again. And if he did it for them, he could do it for me. And so I just want to finish up with what if you feel like maybe you don't have much of a story, maybe you're at the beginning of your journey. You know what, I remember being like a pastor's kid and hearing all dad's demons cast out and like hands growing back stories and thinking, man, I'm walking on water. And I'm like, man, I, you know, how do you get stories like that? But now when I sit down, I'm like, cool, I've got cool stories in all of my categories. There was more categories, we ran out of time, but you know, Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. So ask. If you want an encounter with God, then ask and he will show up. And if you want to see healings and miracles, then ask and seek. What does seeking mean? It means going looking in the logical places. Well, that's where I seek first, like go looking. Where are the logical places to find healings and miracles? Where there's other people who've seen healings and miracles? Go pray beside them. Then you might see, and one day it might be just you on your own, and then you'll see God move. Ask and seek and knock, and that's how you get like a cooler story and another story, and that's how our stories go. But don't just ask. Come and see and then go and tell. Go and tell. Tell your stories. We'll create a rising tide of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's worship.